the main char characteristics of a uh, small giant? Sure. Um, well, the overall thing is that small giants are companies that choose to be great instead of big. In other words, that uh, these are companies that have other goals that they consider more important than getting as big as possible, as fast as possible. Um, and that was the, the overall idea of the book um, when, I, when I set out to write it. What I found was that um, there were actually a lot more of these companies out there than I ever imagined. And they all had this, this quality to them. I, I recognize that there were certain companies that have a, have a certain uh, quality that um, uh, it's very hard to define, but you sort of know it when you see it. Uh, it's what I call in the book Mojo. Mojo. And uh, by that I mean the business equivalent of charisma. When a leader has charisma, you want to follow him or her. Yeah. When a business has mojo, you want to be associated with that business. You want to buy from it, sell to it, work for it. Uh, you want to wear its t-shirts and its caps. Uh, if its leaders are speaking someplace, you want to go hear them. If the book's written about them, you want to read it and so forth. It's what you feel when you're in the presence of greatness in business. All these companies that I looked at had that quality of mojo. And the question I had was, where did it come from? Yeah. And I decided to answer that question by looking at what these companies had in common. And I came up with five characteristics in the book. Actually, now I have six. Uh, and they were basically, number one, these were all companies that were run and led by people who had a very clear idea of who they were, what they wanted out of business, and why. They had a vision of what they wanted to do, and they knew what that was. Number two, these were all companies that had a very, very close relationship to the communities in which they did business. Um, they gave back an awful lot to those communities, but they also sort of reflected the personalities of the communities. Uh, you, you know, you could almost, it got to the point where you can't, you know, you couldn't imagine these companies being any place else other than where they are because they're so tied up in those communities. Uh, number three, these were uh, all companies that had very close relationships with their customers and their suppliers, which were really close one-to-one -one relationships. They were built on one-to-one -one relationships. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't just that they took care of their customers, they really wanted to know their customers, and they really wanted to develop personal contacts Perfect. with them. Uh, number four um, was that these were all companies that oddly enough, even though they had, they had this very close relationship with their customers, they put their employees first. Uh, and the reason they put their employees first was because they knew that their employees uh, were the ones who were going to have the relationship with the customers. So you can't create a great customer experience unless your employees are very much a part of that. Um, and so they created these sort of cultures of intimacy in which, uh, you know, really, the, the, the employees were very much uh, a part of the management and the running of the companies. And finally, in the book, uh, these companies were all companies that, uh, where the leaders had this tremendous passion for what they were doing and, and for what their companies did. Since the book came out, there's another quality that I've found is very important. Uh, because, and I found it out the hard way because one of the companies, in fact, lost their mojo. And I realized that there's a, there is a financial model for small giants. And it's, uh, it's that they, these are companies that have very solid, sound business models and they protect their gross margins. So I would say those are the, the, these six characteristics.